Hey guys, um, so I played, just finished a game. I meant to um, record it, and I was talking the whole time, thinking I was recording it, but I never recorded it. So um, this is after the fact. We're going to do a quick analysis, but this will be nice and quick. Uh, I start with um, the white pieces, and I do my queen's gambit. This is part of the structure of a queen's gambit declined. Typically what happens is I push the gambit. This pawn and this pawn end up there, and that becomes a, a, a chain of pawns with this knight for support um, is becomes very typical of the queen's gambit declined. My opponent um, starts off a little, which is fine, this is all still part of the queen's gambit declined. Queen's gambit refused, Lee Chess calls it. QGD, sometimes it's called, queen's gambit declined. Um, the next move of a standard QGD is like I said, this E6 move, where the opponent props up their pawn um, and it gets their uh, dark square bishop out and about. My opponent goes ahead and, and takes, which is a little bit, okay, it's a little bit different turn sequence, but that's fine. Um, we do the same series of events, and um, in this case, my opponent has gotten his um, bishop out. So you can see now he's made that, that e6 move, so his bishop is out, and I know his bishop wants to come here. Everything I have is, is defended, so I'm going to make a um, an early defensive move and go ahead and move this pawn up to stop that bishop from coming to try to pin my knight. Which causes him to make some other moves. So he's now attacking this. I've got it defended. Attacking, defended. So it's attacked twice, defended twice. Um, I did was thinking about propping it up here, but I remembered I want to get my bishop out early before I close the pawn chain. So I've got my bishop out. I'm happy. This is the first point in the game where I really took some time to think. Um, I'm not ready to make this trade. I want to keep my bishop on the board a little bit longer. I do not want to park it here because if he trades here, I have to then take back with a pawn. This is where I plan on castling, right? This is my king side. I want to castle over on king side over here. You see, I've already messed up my queen side pawn structure, so I definitely don't want to go that way. And his rook, notice, is eyeing up this line. If I were to, let's say, follow this path and he captures, I capture back. I've now given him uh, a little bit of free range with his rook. It's not the end of the world yet, but the, the, these are things to consider. Um, if this, if he starts marching this pawn down, um, hopefully I would be in a position where I could capture back and be honky-dory, but it is possible that he can get that pawn all the way down and my king is stuck under here with um, rook backup. His pawn is marching all the way down with rook backup. So I've had it happen in the past. I've also had it happen the opposite, where I got rid of their... Um, you notice my rook actually has more free range. My rook can go. It's not blocked off my, my own pawn. So I've had it where you've had this sequence where the queen comes over and you deliver checkmate. So I'm just not ready to open up this file right here where my king is with both of our rooks right along here. To me, that, that makes me nervous. And so I'm not going to... So I don't want to tuck it down there. So now I have to decide how do I want to prop up this bishop so that if my opponent takes, I'm not having to use one of these pawns. Um, I have a couple of options to do that. Um, and the one that I decide to go with is I decide to use my queen. So I, I defend it this way. It gets my queen off the back rank. Um, I can still move this pawn later. I didn't want to do it immediately because there becomes another um, concept, overloading. If I had used this pawn, it this pawn now has to defend both of these, right? Um, well, I guess this one isn't attacked in extra time yet, but let's say it were, right? Let's say this were attacked in extra time. Um, this pawn could become the target by when trades start happening here and I move this pawn to, to recapture, now he's undefended. So it oh, this pawn is overloaded because it's having to defend two things at once. So I wasn't ready to do that quite yet. So I had the queen move, made the queen move. My bishop is out from underneath my uh, pawn chain. Um, I can go ahead and get my my pawn moved up out of the way. Yes, it's it's overloaded, but I've got plenty of other defenders also helping out. And now I've opened up my, my bishop and go ahead and take. Now here's another uh, moment where I stopped and thought for a little bit. So he now has this, and notice he's spying all the way down. So this bishop is x-raying his knight all the way down onto my knight. Again, that's a fine trade, but this is my kingside castle. 
I do not have my queen here normally keeping an eye on that knight, so I have to figure out a way to prop up this knight so that I'm not having to recapture right in front of my king. So before I castle, I want to make an extra move to make sure this guy is defended. Um, I choose to go ahead back with my bishop. Is this the best move? I don't know. Um, probably could have moved my queen over here um, and stuck the queen there and left my bishop out. I don't know. But my thought process was simply, hey, my bishop out here is undefended. I can do two things at once. I can bring it back, defend. My bishop is now overly defended, and it's defending the knight. And when I castle, I can stick my rook under there too. So that was my thought process. Whether it was the right move or not, I don't know. He makes a principled move. He lines up his rook with my king, but I'm castling anyway, so everybody's happy. So here indeed is the first set of trades. Um, I go ahead and use that pawn that I had propped up earlier. And notice this is still defended twice, so I'm happy. Now he chooses not to make any exchanges. Notice he was attacking it twice. I had it defended twice. I don't know exactly where this knight is going, honestly. I didn't see the purpose of this move uh, other than to maybe move it um, here or here and maybe try to start an attack on my king side. So um, the thought process was if this knight were to come to... Um, if, he, if the goal is to start throwing material down at me on the king side, then maybe this kind of thing would happen uh, or maybe this might happen, but... He does have this opportunity to maybe get his queen out. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe like that, get the queen out there and maybe get this on that. I don't know. But my thought process here again was I want to uh, protect against this move. If he moves his knight here looking to start trading off some material, I don't want this knight sitting in front of my king. So I make another prophylactic move. Um, I think that's the word. Man, I'm probably saying it wrong. I make another um, move, uh, early defensive move, to, to make sure that I take away that square from that knight. Uh, again, I'm not quite as nervous because that rook is gone. Um, he no longer has a dark square bishop because we've traded those off, so I don't have to worry too much about this diagonal. So I'm, I'm a little bit okay here making this move. Uh, yep, line up my... Um, Prop, using my rook to prop up my knight, uh, my bishop, in case things start getting traded off. Um, the only thing that's defending this bishop right now, well, no, it's not. It's got two defenders on it. So, um, I don't. I guess this wasn't quite as necessary now with the um, the king gone, but I was just in the mindset to get that rook moved over. Um, yep, he indeed is coming after my uh, pawn. I have my pawn defended here, so I'm okay. And then I do the dumb move. So here's, here's my thought process, and here's the words that I was saying in the game. I know he's coming after this pawn, but I've got this pawn defended. What I'd like to do is I'd like to move my knight here so that I can threaten some kind of checkmate. With my knight here, my queen here, I am got double pressure on that point there. So I, I start looking at checkmate. Um, I completely missed, first of all, this knight is here defending that square. So the checkmate is not going to happen. I also missed the fact that um, I had just said the words, hey, I'm using this queen to defend that guy, and then I move it out of the way. So I just drop a free pawn. So he does not take it right away. Um, he moves his knight here. So this is the walk that this knight took, if you remember. It was here, so he was getting it out of the way so he could start pushing this pawn is what it looks like. And he moved it here and then back here. This pawn is still up for grabs. And I was so mad at myself for leaving this pawn up for grabs, I said, you know what, F it. I'm just going to go for a risky maneuver, throw my knight up here, and threaten checkmate. Again, I had forgotten about that knight. So I go for it. He takes the um, pawn with an attack on my knight. And I am. it is at this moment in time that I recognize that I have made a boo-boo. So he takes that. My knight is unprotected. I cannot capture here because then he can just capture my queen for free. Actually, I would be able to recapture, but then he could recapture. So no, yeah, it would still be free. He would go to basically take my queen for free. So I know I cannot capture. I've made a mistake. I need to defend this knight. I find a alternative to straight up defending this knight. I know he's going to take it. 
but I also see that I can go here. I can take his knight. So I'm trading this knight for that knight. Now, what does that do for me? Not a whole lot, but I'm hoping that I can then pivot and pick up a second knight, um, mess up his pawn structure, or he'll have to take back with the queen, or something else. Maybe I can pivot and pick up here, which forks the two rooks. Maybe I can get some material that way. So I'm, I'm hoping that um, I can make a swap here, knowing that this is a lost piece. I'm hoping to try to confuse the issue. And I get kind of lucky. Do you see why? Yeah, the only thing that was defending that square was that knight. By taking back the way he did, he gives me this square. Now it is not checkmate, because he has an escape square, but it is check. And it gives me an opportunity to defend my knight. So I can then bring my queen back and defend my knight. He moves out of the way, I defend my knight. So I'm happy, my knight is defended. Um, we can continue with the rest of the game. There is still a lot of concern around here. Um, this knight could come here and he could start threatening checkmate for me, on me. Um, just this queen by itself in front of my king makes me nervous because he could... It, it, there are, here's an empty rook file. So yeah, there are, there's lots of complications left. Let's just believe it at that, right? So there's lots of complications left. He takes a free pawn. Except he misses something. And you guys tell me when you see it. This knight is protecting those squares. This king only has a couple of escape squares. This king can only go here or here at this moment in time because its rook is blocking it. If he had moved his king, I think the game would have been fine. If he had maybe, hmm, what else could he have done? No, not that, uh, he, yes. He could have attacked my queen, right? Yeah, I probably could have found something like this and... No, because he can just leave that king there. There's nothing for it because even if he does anything, that's nothing because he can just take it. So yeah, so he could have attacked my queen but defending that square. So, I was defending my knight but I'm also threatening checkmate. He misses it, checkmate. The king can't go anywhere. There is no squares for this king to run away to. The queen likes to attack directly. Um, it is protected by the knight, and that one move, picking up that pawn, cost him the game. Now, I almost threw the game. I was lucky in the fact that um, I caught him with this bit of confusion, which is the only reason I did it, is because I was losing this game, and so this was a desperate kind of move. Now, I knew that he would take back here, and then I would just have to find a way to get my knight out of the out of the game um, out of danger. So maybe something like this. I don't know. Let's go look at the engine. What the engine says at this moment in time. So the engine saying I'm a little bit ahead. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I always hate it when I do that. The engine says I'm. Uh, no, the engine says he's a little bit ahead. Excuse me. He takes my pawn. Um, I need to get my. Oh, I could have brought him back now. Because he still has... No, yeah, I've got two defenders, two attackers. So, okay, so it's not as bad as I thought it was. I was just so mad that I gave up that free pawn. Um, thinking that I, I could have given up my knight. Taking there... Like I said, he can take it back either way. And my knight is still in the danger of going. But I was hoping to th add some confusion to the mix. Um, I just assumed that he would take that way. Oh, it says it does. Oh, right, because I've got that fork. Yeah, yeah, so I've got a little bit of extra material I can win back. So I'm up a little bit, even though I dropped a pawn. But it just so turned out that he moved the one piece he didn't need to. Oh, and in this case, it still says that I, it's only a very marginal advantage. So he had a marginal advantage on his side, and this is a marginal advantage on my side. So the game is not over. It's still very much in play. Um... The, the, the thing that he has to pick is either he has to move his um, king. Yeah, because see, he's got that. Right, 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 right. But, yeah, because he had this square protected by his queen. 
he had to recognize that the, the thing that was preventing checkmate was that queen. So either start walking his king all the way to the other side somewhere, maybe tuck it up under here and then get this rook over. Um, but he didn't. He didn't recognize that I was threatening checkmate there. So that's all she wrote. Anyway, I had recorded this with my my thoughts live, and you should have heard the uh, the uh, the the roller coaster of emotions I went through from dropping this pawn, recognizing that I don't have checkmate, recognizing that this guy can just run away with his king, to um, coming back and getting and getting the checkmate. Because right here I said, oh no, he just lost the game. So anyway, this was a fun game. I'm sorry you guys didn't get it live, and I'm sorry you only got the analysis, but. Um, hopefully you found it fun. Thanks.